Right. So we've shown we've shown a lot of things um, about polynomial rings over U of these. If we have a U of D and we take its field of fractions. We know that any polynomial over the field of fractions is a constant times uh, something primitive. So basically, there's a there's a canonical choice of pulling out a uh, pulling out a, a constant from a polynomial where you remove all the denominators and then you remove the greatest common divisor. And you're left with something that is not the, a multiple of any constant without including denominators. Um, so that's one thing we know. The other thing, important thing we know is that if you multiply so polynomials, their contents multiply. Uh, so for example, you multiply primitive polynomials, welcome. You multiply primitive polynomials and you get a primitive polynomial. For all MP. All right, so today we're going to close out the chapter by showing that the polynomial ring over a U of T is a U of T M. Really, we've, we've already, we've done pretty much all the work. Um, so um, I need to show that every element has a unique factorization. So Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because I can't hear anything. You can't? How, how do you know that I say yes? You're in my lips. Uh, can everyone else hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Oh boy. All right, um, Tiago is trying to come in and out. I, I want to show he has a, a unique factorization. <clears throat> into irreducibles. Um, so, Well, what can I do? I guess you can start by saying that uh, like f of x is equal to a times um, like the f bar of x. And then set that equal to say like b times g bar of x, and then show that they're uh, the same. What do you mean b b times g bar of x? Yeah, just just assuming that. Um, well, I guess you're trying to say that those two are different, and then you end up at a contradiction because. Oh, we already but we we did that on Wednesday. We know oh, that okay. splitting into a into a constant and a primitive thing is unique. So, um, well, right. So, um, we can split F uniquely. It's always up to units. 
And you could always stick a negative one sign everywhere. As a constant times a primitive polynomial. So now I guess I have two things to factor. Um, I'm going to do the easy one for you. Uh, I, a, a is an R, which is a U of D. So A splits into products of irreducibles. And this is unique. All right. Glad to hear that you can hear. So I guess uh, we've reduced this to, oh, John gets the point. Um, we reduce this to, to factoring a primitive polynomial. So, I mean, I think the the fact that you can factor is not a problem because you know either it's irreducible or it isn't and then if it's not you factor um but uh, the uniqueness is going to be a problem so how do i how can i be sure that i'm factoring that the things i'm factoring are actually prime can i look at this problem over a ring that I know it's a U of T already. Other than, I mean, R, R is a U of T, but. A ring that contains, um, that contains a polynomial over R. I was kind of thinking R mod P, but I don't know if that works. I don't know. Um, I mean, R mod P doesn't contain, X is not an element in there. If you say, if you take the polynomial ring and you portion by a prime, that is a U of D, uh, that, that, sorry, yeah. But, but that's kind of what we're trying to prove. No, wait, no, no, no. You could, I mean, no, Amor P, we don't know anything about. Um, could be a U of D, could not be, uh, could be a much more complicated ring. Is it the um, field of fractions? The field of fractions? How does the field of fractions contain, uh, contain the polynomial? All of the elements of the ring are also in the. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, yeah, you're onto something. Uh, if the content is in the field of fractions and the polynomials in the field of fractions. Are you saying that the polynomial is a polynomial over the field of fractions? I guess I'm asking both of you. Oh, wait, are you asking about what? So, so that's not what you're asking? Because I mean, 
I mean, well, yeah, I meant to say if the if the uh, if the content is in the field of fractions and the polynomials and if in a polynomial ring in the field of fractions. I mean, yeah. I guess it's kind of a, a language thing. Uh, you know, the polynomial. You know, I would say this is a polynomial. It's a polynomial where the reals, but it's not in the reals, you know. Because the elements of R, are, it's not a number, you know. It, it does, it's not an element of the real. So, uh, okay, so I see what you mean now. You mean that the coefficients are in the field of fractions. So yeah. I can think of this as a polynomial over, pretty sure, I mean, I suck at prepositions uh, because it made no sense thinking. to me in English, but I think it's the difference between over and in. Uh, okay, so, um, all right, uh, Mason and, and Tiago yeah, we'll get a bonus point. So, okay, so this is. You were thinking about evaluations of the function for any x in your field or field of fractions or just any real x well i mean that would be a number of course uh i don't know what we would gain here from doing that i guess i'm just trying to um so over by over you just mean that's I just it. mean the, oh, the coefficients are real numbers. Field. But in, you mean for valuations of x, those are in um, some field. Is so that by in? I'm or, just saying, if you take a ring, like the integers, you know, the integers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3x squared minus 2 is not, a, is not an integer. It's an integer, but then, you know, x is not an integer. Um, X is not an element in, in Z. Z, you know what Z is? One, two, three, four, the negative numbers as well. X is X in the list of integers? No, no, it's not. Um, it's a polynomial over the integers, meaning the numbers that appear, the coefficients, are are integers, but not the polynomial itself. You know, it, it's it's a it's a different set. Um, X is an element of this set, which is which contains the integers, but it also contains X and X squared and X to the fifth minus five. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. All right, so this is... Um, All right, so F is definitely an element in here, uh, just because this contains um, the polynomials over R. Oh, so are you trying to get us to basically argue like under closure of the operations that we use, like taking powers just being repeated multiplication? So if you take some X, um, in your field of fractions, then any any time you raise it to any power and multiply it by any element in the field of fractions, you're still going to get something which is in the field of fractions. Is that what you're? No, because when when we talk about polynomials and we talk about x, x is not really, you know, in calculus. So, okay. In calculus, when you say sine of x or something like this, you mean you mean that x is a is a number. When you say that this is a this is a function. Um, and this is a function with input with input um, a real number and some some output. But to talk about polynomials, I don't like doing that. And I explained that, I think it was a first class. Um, 
I don't want to say the polynomials are functions. For several reasons. Um, first of all, they don't really have a domain. Um, because if you have 3x squared minus 2, uh, I would like to say that I can plug in an integer there. But I would also like to plug in really anything, a complex number, uh, even an integer mod p. So it's really, the domain could be any ring. I just, I want to say for every ring, I get a function. But that is already, and it's not just one function. And also, if you look, for example, on, on Z2 effects, x sends 0 to 0 and 1 to 1, of course. Um, but x squared always also sends 1 to 0, 0 and 1 to 1. And I don't want to say that they're equal, even though they're equal as They're equal as functions, but they're not the same polynomial. Uh, I mean, if they if they were, then I know things like degree wouldn't make sense because x equals x squared. Nothing. A lot of the things I'm doing doesn't make sense. Uh, don't make sense anymore. Um, so really, I have to think that x is just x. X is a letter. It it might represent a number, but it might just be x. And it's an element of a ring, of a polynomial ring. And it, you know, we know how to multiply it, and we know how how to add it. How do you multiply x by x? You get x squared. And how do you add x and x squared? You get x plus x squared. So, as long, really, as long as I know how to add and multiply, that's all I need. Uh, and I don't need to say that x is a function to be able to add it to x squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So polynomials aren't just functions. Um, okay. So back to where we were. We have a polynomial over the this ring, which makes it automatically a polynomial over the field of fractions. Um, so uh, Is the polynomial ring over a field of fractions a U of D? I want to say yes. You would be correct. Um, do we have a reason? Not only is it a U of D, yeah, we, we know already that it's a U of D. It's, it's kind of like the argument we've been using the past few days, right? It all comes down to uh, basically, if you have two polynomials that are equivalent, you can pull out um, common divisors, whether in the numerators or denominators, um, and then just show, or maybe not even necessarily equivalent. They could be, you know, they could differ by some um, factor, by some element in FR, uh, but have the same factorization. So then their contents would just be different. Um, um, I mean, over a field, you don't really, there's really nothing to say about factorizations over a field because they're all, um, what do you want to say? Everything is a unit. So everything just has a, everything divides everything. Anyway, this is what we've seen in the course so far, chapter 17 and, eight, and 18. So what, you know, there's, there's been like half the course so far has been about polynomial rings. Greedly polynomial rings over a field. Uh, so what have we shown 
what have we shown um, about polynomial rings over a field that tells us that they are U of T? How about um, we showed it's a PID because um, um, for any rings over any field. Um, Problems over any field are principal ideal domain, and a principal ideal domain um, are, are it's an automatic but unique factorization domain. That was we showed that a couple of weeks ago, uh, and we showed that it's a PAD twice now. Once in the in the first chapter, we showed it just directly, we, we said take an ideal, you take the element to the smallest degree, use the division algorithm. That was the, the key to that. And a second time when we showed uh, that any Euclidean domain is a PID and polynomial rings over a field are also a Euclidean domain. Does this ring a bell? The polynomial rings over a field are a PID? Yes. Right. So, um, so over the polynomial ring, we can factor uniquely so um now, of course, we're factoring over the or with coefficients in the fraction field. So this is not a factorization over the ring. So how can we how can we turn this into a factorization over the ring? And you already told me the answer to this question, except we used it for something else. Yeah. For for each one of them, I guess one by one you could just um pull out the, or express them as the product of, um, you know, their, their content and some polynomial in the, which is coefficients in the ring. Yes, that is exactly what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so for each one you take, uh, you pull out the, the, whatever constant you need to pull out so that this is primitive and in particular it's going to be in its coefficients are going to be in the ring so we have that f of x is going to be some constant let's just call it a times the product of primitive polynomials so um the question now is is this constant in the ring um or or could it have a denominator so if you find the right thing to use out of the stuff we proved um this is this is very easy Did we say that um, the polynomials over the field of fractions or just a field? Say that again? Is the did we say that the polynomials over the field of fractions or just the field? Well, both, right? The field of fractions is a field, so. Yeah. 
Okay. So we have this identity and I just think whenever you have an identity over the, with polynomials like this, I mean, you, you know a lot about the polynomials about on, on both sides and you don't know about the constant. I think the way to go is look at the content of both sides. The content has to be the same. So the content, well, on the left, I have the content of F and on the right, I have uh, the product of the content of the constant, the, and then the contents of all of these polynomials. So what is the content of a constant? The constant. Right, it's the constant itself. It's just the GCD of itself, uh, clearly. And what about the cons the content of of these polynomials that I have here? They're all primitive, so one. Exactly. They're all primitive, so they're all one. So what do I have? I have that the, con the content of F is A. So does this answer my question? Um, is A in the ring? Yes, A has to be in the ring. So, um, okay, so I factored, um, So what I've achieved is a factor F, A is a constant in the ring. Um, and these are primitive. And irreducible over the, the field of fractions. So, um, well, R is a U of D, so I can factor A. I already said this before, just into reducibles. Um, and now I guess the question is, um, is the is the stuff on the on the right irreducible over the ring I care about? Over in. Um, are they? Wasn't there some um, lemma that we had or, or something already where I think that ba basically it showed primitive um, polynomials are indeed irreducible? Or I mean, I'm trying to think in the case where like all the coefficients are plus or minus one. Um, Let's look for the lemma uh, because you're um you're onto the right thing um oh here it is we we've we've seen this um so we have a u of t and it's field of fraction and it says a primitive polynomial is irreducible over the field dependently if it's irreducible over the ring so that's yeah that's exactly what we were trying to do yeah 
um, what we're trying to use. So the the but but this is even um, this is even easier because how could you be reducible over the over the smaller ring if you if g1 factors in r of x automatically it factors in f r of x just it's the exact same factorization if you if you are a product of, of polynomials with integer coefficients automatically you're going to be a product of polynomials with rational coefficients just those same polynomials the um, i mean we know that the the other way works as well which is the the, the way that is hard to prove but we proved it already <clears throat> so they are irreducible okay so well that uh, we've shown so the factorization exists so uh, what's left to prove is that it's unique So suppose that we have two factorizations. Um, so uh, P1, Pn, And on the other side, we have Q1, QR, and then some other polynomials, H1 and HS. So first of all, um, the Gs and Hs are irreducible. In in here, so they are, they must be primitive. Because if they weren't primitive, that you could pull out a number. That is not a unit. So to be reducible, you you have to be primitive, right? Um, to be to yes to to not be a product. So, um, so how can we show that the p's are the, the same as the q's up to a unit and the g's are the same as the h's? So you're saying um, primitive polynomials are basically analogous to just units in a ring? Not units. Um, I don't know what they're analogous to. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, no, not even necessarily. No, it's, no, but I'm saying it's a requirement. It's not, it doesn't guarantee, you know, so um, X squared minus one is, is primitive, but reducible. But what is clear is that if, if you have something that is, that is not primitive, it can surely, you, you're sure that you can factor. And and two is not a unit um, over the integers. So I'm saying you might be if you're primitive, you might be still reducible, but you definitely need to be primitive to be reducible. <clears throat> okay, so I have my two factorizations. It would be incredible if you could copy and paste. Um, but you can't. Thank you. 
So can we just um, so we we're trying to show that the factorizations agree. Uh, can we make this into a problem about a uh, about something that we know is a UFC again? Well, these are both equal to f, so both their contents have to be the same as the content of f, since then what you're, you're left with primitive polynomials. Uh, yeah, so that actually that's going to take care of the of all the constants. So, uh, say contents on both sides. You have. Um, Again, since uh, the G's and H's are primitive, they they will just give you they will just give you one. So what you have is. Um, that the constants are the same. And, and by the way they're factored, um, well, th these, are, these are just constants. And what, we, what we're assuming is that R is a U of D. So in some order, P1 is Q1, blah, blah, blah. And, and, there, and there's the same number. So, so that's a that six zero has the problem. Um, so what we're left is with a product of primitive polynomials that are the same. Um, So how can we show that um, that these two factorizations agree? Well, since the factorization of F is unique, then, and, um, oh, we first need to show that N equals S, right? Okay. Um, hmm. You said factorization of, there's F. a lot of, there's, there's two Fs. I don't know which one you're talking oh, about. Um, I get or little f. f. Little f. Okay. Well, the, the polynomial. Yeah. So that one's that one has a unique factorization. Um, well, that's what we're trying to prove. If we knew that, then these would have to be the same because these are two factorizations of f. Um, so well, what we should do is, is what we did to what we did in the other situations, just, uh, just look at over the field of fractions where we know we have a PID. So So these are two factorizations. Over a, a U of D.
Um, so, well, they should be equal as long as we know that the, that everything involved is is irreducible. So. Um, so, in the bigger ring, is there a chance that they could be irreducible over the ring, and reducible over the field of fractions? Because that would be that would be a problem. Did we show both directions of that question? That I think if it's irreducible in um, the field of fractions, or no, if it's reducible over the if the ring, then it's reducible over the the field of fractions. Yeah, we might have. What what were you gonna say, Mason? Uh, I was just gonna say that we do already have a corollary that says that uh, a primitive polynomial in the uh and a ufd is irreducible in the field of fraction we do yes we we do know that yeah exactly uh, this is um sometimes i think this is what we call Gauss's lemma um a, a polynomial is irreducible over the uh the ring if and only if it's irreducible over the field of fractions which is exactly what we need now You can't, if you have a polynomial that's reducible over the integers, it can't somehow become reducible over the rationals, which is uh, fantastic. So, um, since, um, in some order, we have that they're, um, we have that they're equal up to a unit. So well, a unit in the field of fractions, a, a unit, sorry, in the polynomial ring or a field, we know is just a constant. So, um, so finally, um, what we need to show is that, G, so we have that for every i, g i is, no, I already used a, We only need to show bi is a unit in R. So how can we how can we show this based on what we know about the G's and the H's? The G's and the H's are um, word primitive. They're primitive, exactly. So if uh, BI is not a unit, then you, you would have a different content. Right. So for the last time, exactly. Uh, take contents. The content of G is BI times the contents of H. This is one. This is one or a unit because the content only makes sense up to a unit. Um, and that's that's it. So to recap, um, we had some sort of factorization. When you take contents, 
you see that A1 equals C1 up to reordering. And then using that this is a UFD, we get that G1X equals H1X. That's essentially what we did, we're, we're done. Um, are there any questions? <clears throat> so, now we have a lot of examples of U of these. So, all right, so what are examples of U of these? Um, remind me real quick, was the relationship between UFDs and PIDs? So uh, UFD, so UFD is, the, so is, the, is the weakest thing. So any Euclidean domain you can think of is a PID. Any PID you can think of is a UFD. Okay. Um, so what PIDs do you know? Any, any field of uh, integers. You said any field? Uh, right, so Z is a U of D. So this tells us that the polynomials over it are U of D, which we've already, we already, eh, no, I think we just proved it. It's the first time we proved it. Uh, any field is a PAD. Um, this we knew. So these were kind of the, the two examples, basically the polynomial ring, polynomial ring and, and Z. But now with this, we can have more examples because now since this is a U of D, the polynomial ring over it is a U of D. So these are just polynomials in two variables. And the polynomial ring over it is a U of D. Um, for the same reason, Z and polynomials over any number of variables. Um, this is also a U of D. Um, none of these are PADs. So this is an interesting example where you can be a U of D and not a PAD. So the other way doesn't work. Um, I guess the Gaussian integers and polynomials over it are also a U of D. Um, so I don't, know, I don't know if you knew before that polynomial rings are over any number of variables are, are a U of D, but now you do. And that is the end of the chapter. Uh, so we'll stop recording. Um,